Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be saved.
serves the world And it can fill me And that's empty praise The treasures that fade Are never enough You came along Put me back Welcome. It's good to see everyone. Uh, thanks, Todd and the team, for leading us in worship. It's so good to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's why we gather every weekend. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors here at Rock Point, and it's so good to worship together. 
Uh, Todd and the team will continue leading us in worship music after a little bit. We're going to hear a little bit about what happened with our food drive in a little bit. And then Ron Gray is back, and he's going to be preaching to us. And we're so happy. We're so excited. We love Ron a lot. Also, we have Christy Hoff in the house over here, and she is our beloved missionary, IIW International Worker, who is in Niger, and she's back on home assignment here. And so come and bless her, come pray for her, come here from her, buy her food, whatever she needs, uh, give it to her. She's one of our beloved. So welcome back, Christy. We, we're honored you're here, and the work that you do is so important, and we're so encouraged, and you need to know we're super duper proud of you. So I want to read a scripture. I love reading scripture. Some of you may need this today. In Deuteronomy, it says, the eternal God is your dwelling place. The eternal God is your dwelling place. That means God is your refuge. That means God is your home. That means God is your firm foundation. The eternal God is your dwelling place. So I just want to remind us of that today. Some of us may be having a difficult week, and the invitation is rest in God, our dwelling place. For some of us, we feel a little skittish. You know, you feel a little, uh, today they call it kind of like we, we're prone to wander, or we like wandering, and God says, come, come and be with me. Deuteronomy 33, the eternal God is your dwelling place. And get this, underneath are the everlasting arms. His everlasting arms perpetually saving us, lifting us up, strengthening us. So we remember God, our everlasting God. Would you stand? Let me pray for us, and the team will lead us. Lord God, you are the eternal God. You call us to dwell with you. You say, come and be part of my family. You say, if you need a refuge, I'm right here. If you need a firm foundation, that's me. I, I got it. And help us to rest in your everlasting arms. We need your strength, your saving, your provision. And so as we come to worship at this service right now, we ask that you just remind us of that. You are our God. We are your people. Amen. Amen. Well, Jesus taught us to pray uh, exactly as John was just saying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And rather than uh, reading the whole thing or reciting the whole thing for you, why don't we sing it together? This song is called As It Is In Heaven. Your name on earth as it is in heaven. Every eye proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. 
earth as it is. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in the kingdom is yours. For the kingdom is yours. The power. For the kingdom is yours, the power is yours, the glory forever. The kingdom is yours, the kingdom is yours, the power is yours, the glory forever. Amen. One more time. For the kingdom is yours, the power is yours, the glory forever. Take it away, Eric. I will sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. I will sing, I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every eye proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is. For the kingdom is yours, for the kingdom is yours, the power. Man, wow, what a great song. What a great time to have uh, all these wonderful friends up on stage here to play music with and worship with, uh, including the wonderful Eric. Eric, it is so good to see you. Uh, not to mention our, our Amy Lane from Bearspa, who's come to support us, sharing the love. And um, Jerry Griffiths, another elusive creature around these parts on drums. I'm just playing water all over myself. Great. Give it up for Jerry. This is a little self-gratuitous. I know we're here for Jesus, but it's good to celebrate one another. And, uh, and last but certainly not least, my dear, dear friend, a man whose birthday it was only yesterday, Trevor McElberger. Wish Trevor a happy, happy birthday. Very good. I just need a bit of a reprieve after that last one. That was a bit of effort. But we're going to carry right on, along here. Um. Awesome. Well, um, sometimes I have like a small soliloquy to share in the middle of worship, and it probably is greatly to the consternation of whomever is preaching. They're like, okay, enough. Just sing the songs, man, and get off the stage. <laughs> but uh, today is not one of those days. I don't have a lot to share. Um, but as I was just thinking about this song uh, that we're about to sing, um, this one verse came to my mind. And I couldn't give you a reference because I don't know it off by heart. Um, but I do know the verse. And the verse says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And does anyone happen to know the second part? Yes! Wilma! <laughs> but the Lord delivers them from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all.
Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never felt me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. I know the night won't last, I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass Oh, my heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough My heart will sing your praise again. Oh, your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your this is my confidence, you never fail. Come on, your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still, I'm still in your hands. This is my I'll see you do it again. I 
your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never. sing that out today. You've never failed me, yet I know. You've never failed me, yeah. Great Thank you, Lord, that though our afflictions at times may be many, God, still your promise is that you will deliver us from all of them. God, in the midst of all kinds of challenges, pain and heartache and grief, 
God, you're faithful to meet us. You're faithful to show up, Lord. When we call upon your name, God, you answer. Lord, as the psalmist said, I called out to the Lord. He answered me. He, he lifted me up out of the miry clay. And God, I pray, Lord, that today, God, if there are those uh, in our midst, Lord, that are just under heavy burdens and, and fall into some dark pits, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, that you would be our deliverance, that you would come meet, meet us in this moment, meet us in this place. God, just shine your light of, of hope. God, pour out strength, Lord, as we sang, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Lord, I pray, Lord, just for a release of hope and strength in this place as we call upon the strong name of our Savior, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you can have a seat. If you are a kid, you may go. And uh, we are going to watch a video with some news. So check it out. Hey church, Brandon here with this week's video announcements. Before we get to the good stuff, remember that you can connect with someone on staff either by scanning this QR code or by heading to rockpoint.ca slash contact us. Sam Techley, one of Rockpoint's international workers, is looking for old phones and tablets we might have lying around. The used phones or tablets will be given to remote area schools to use for educational purposes, youth programs, and will also be given to some evangelists. With Bibles and the Jesus film available in audio version in local dialects, we would like to use used electronics, which can be very expensive to get in Ethiopia. If you have older devices still in working condition, please bring them to a weekend service or let the church office know at office at rockpoint.ca. We are getting closer to the day when we will finally meet the Afghani refugee family that our church is sponsoring. The process is long, but forward progress is being made. In case you haven't heard, sometime in the next few months, we will be joined by a family of seven, dad, mom, and five kids ranging from three to 20 years old. We will be responsible for all of their needs, housing, household items, furniture, assistance with schooling and transportation, all of it. We are not asking for material donations yet, but we will be soon, so keep that in mind. For now, please pray for their safety and for a quick arrival in Canada. Also, please consider financially supporting this effort. You can do so through your regular mode of giving and by designating your gift to Refugee Sponsorship. We are looking for someone to join our staff team as a facilities crew member. This role would consist of cleaning, maintenance and security of our buildings, set up for our weekend services, and care for our parking lots and walkways. If you are interested in this role or feel God nudging you in this direction, please send a resume and letter of interest to office at rockpoint.ca. Hey, did you know that a group of rock pointers recently gathered for an afternoon of motorcycling around Southern Alberta? 16 people came together for a meal, connection, and the thrill of the open road. Many are looking forward to another similar opportunity soon. God continues to use all sorts of activities, interests, and hobbies to draw his people together for his glory. That's all from me for today. Have a blessed week. His shirt, I think it said the Justice League of Shakespeare. I have so many questions. I can't wait to see him in the office because that, I couldn't see the bottom half of his shirt. That was awesome. Um, so, in case you're new here, uh, my name is John. I want to say welcome to you. I'm a pastor here at Rock Point. I'm a pastor here at this site. And uh, myself and uh, Rona Hathaway is over there. She's waving her hand. Sherilyn is also there. She's on staff here. They're saying both in the back. That's where the troublemakers sit. Anyway, we would love to meet you. So, if you're a troublemaker, look for those two in the lobby. And if you're not a troublemaker, you can look for me in the lobby. We'd love to welcome you. Or you can meet me. And uh, I also was remiss in forgetting to mention, Sam Techley is back in town where Sam over there. Sam is one of our Bow Ridge own, and he's here between, get this, between two trips to Ethiopia where he's doing some missions work. And so if you get a chance, just like you're going to do with Christy, you walk up to our, our beloved missionaries and you bless them and you ask them, how can I pray for you? What do you need? And give them lots of prayers. So Sam is back out on the road soon, like this week, next week? 
this week. Okay, so you can catch, this is an amazing opportunity to have today. And if you're online watching live, you can come and run down. We're at 12 Bow Ridge Drive. You can make it happen. And if not, if you watch it online on demand later, you can still pray it up for them. I want to give a special announcement about something else that's cool going on. We have missions happening all over the place. And this week, starting Monday, we have a local missions trip for our youth that is going to be taking place at our Bears Paw site. We have 25 youth and young adults that will be participating there. And if you actually go past our Bears Paw site, you might be alarmed because you're going to see a small village of tents set up there. They'll call the police. It's our youth. Yeah, they might make some noise too, but it's our youth, so don't call the police. Uh, they're going to camp out in the evenings, and in the day, what they're going to do is they're going to serve in a local mission project. And this year, their local mission area of focus is Rock Point Intercultural, which is one of our ministry expressions located in Northeast Calgary, doing a lot of ministry to immigrant families. And so you can pray for them. They're going to run sports camps, craft camps, and they're going to appreciate your prayer. Here's one thing uh, Marcella, who is our youth pastor here, asked us to, to communicate. There's a big meal that they share with kids and families at the end of each day in the northeast of Calgary. There's usually about 150 people who come, and the cost for each person for the whole week is $25. And so we're looking for some sponsors for a meal. If you want to sponsor one member of that northeast community, they'd appreciate it so much. If there's 150 people from Rock Point who can sponsor one person at 25 bucks will be covered. So just 150 people, 25 bucks each. Donations can be made by cash or check or online at Rock Point Church. And if you're doing it online, just designate it. It's for the youth local mission trip, youth local mission trip. Or you can email uh, uh, Marcella, which is mhernandez at rockpoint.ca. All right, so I'm so excited about that. I'm really excited about missions that we do. It really is close to a verse like, it's, I have a verse that's close to me about this. Psalm 145, verse 9 says this. This is what we're about at Bow Ridge. The Lord is good to everyone. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all His creation. The Lord's good to everyone. He showers compassion on all His creation. That's what we want to be about. So I've got a friend, uh, Becky Serafinchin. Could you come on up here? She is uh, a friend of mine, and she serves on our site leadership team here with a number of others. And Becky has been uh, kind of looking after our Greenwood Village food project thing that we've been doing. So tell us a little bit about that. What have we been doing the last six weeks, seven weeks? So many of you know this. Uh, Greenwood Village is a mobile home community that's just about two kilometers to the west of us, just tucked behind the new farmer's market. And they had identified that they had uh, ongoing food insecurity. And so uh, as a church you were all issued the invitation to be part of alleviating that need. And let me just say that um, what a pleasure it was for me to see the generosity of all of you in action. It was uh, six weeks of donating either online or bringing uh, cleaning supplies and pet food and groceries and all of those kind of necessary things that are sometimes out of reach for some folks um, to the church or donating online. And in total, and I did weigh everything, <laughs> it was more than 900 pounds of food that was donated. And in addition to that, there was $800 of uh, financial donations that can just be put to use in the way that they say they see is the greatest need. And so that was fantastic. That's awesome. 900 pounds and $800. Wow, sounds like we could start a new Christmas carol. 900, 800, 700, 600. So that, that's pretty cool. So, okay, for a lot of us, when we're participating, either we go online and we kind of, we give in that way or we can give over there or maybe we brought something and put it on the table. Now, what happened after the food went on the table? So once a week... I would go over with those donations because rather than let it all amass here, it just makes a lot of sense to, to get that into the hands of people who need it. And so once a week, I and some of you would go over and meet with the office team there and uh, just lay out the food for people to come and get as they needed. And those shelves were empty each week that I came. And so the opportunity to build relationships there and to see the love that 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 office team has for that community was fantastic, but certainly it was eye-opening to see that the need was so great there as well. That's awesome. I have one, question, one last question for you. Uh, what surprised you, either about yourself or Bow Ridge or Greenwood, what did God kind of reveal to you that you're like, I never thought I would 
think about that during this period? I think a, a thing that surprised me probably the most was to, how very easy it was to see Jesus and what he's doing in the people who are at Greenwood Village. And so it just really brought home to me again that, in fact, Jesus is at work everywhere and his, um, his compassion and his practical love is all in every community and in every life. And it was a real treat for me and everyone else who got to be a part of it to participate in that. That's cool. That's yeah. so cool. Well, I'm going to invite uh, Becky to do the pastoral prayer for us. So I, I'm a pastor here, but when we say pastoral prayer, uh, we believe that if you're a believer, you also can pray a pastoral prayer. And so uh, well, how do you know what to pray for? Well, sometimes God reveals something to you, like what just happened, and you can use that as a guide for praying. Oftentimes, sometimes uh, in my household, maybe it's just me, sometimes I'm bothered by things. <laughs> I'm like complaining about stuff, or I'm critical about stuff. Sometimes God uses that as an ingredient to help you learn to pray more. So uh, we're about to enter into this sermon. Would you pray for Green? Would you pray for us? Pray for the world. Love that. Thanks, Becky. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we are here and we have been drawn to you and drawn to this place together by your love. And we are sustained by your love. And it is good to be here. And it's good to know that, that it's you. We've been entrusted to you. And you are the one that is creating um, in us people who love like you do and people who act like you do. And so I pray that that will happen through our time of worship here together. I pray that you will uh, cause us to see you at work in the world around us and see how, how tangible um, and compassionate and real your love is for the real needs of the people in our communities and in the world around us. And Lord Jesus, it is good to know that there is nowhere that you are not at work. And we realize as well that there is, there is great evil that is at work in the world and yet you are there. And so we pray that you would cause us to be people who would see in our communities and in the places around the world ways where we can be mindful and spirit-filled doers of your will so that we will see your kingdom come and your will done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. I thought there must be someone else up here, but it's, it's great to be with you. I want to invite you to turn to James chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, and uh, while you make your way there, James chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, I have a, an update. So it was about three months ago this coming Tuesday that my left eye began to have some fairly serious problems. Between then and now, there's been two retinal tears, two retinal detachments, two laser treatments, two surgeries, and no less than 67 days either laying on my back, my side, my face, or sitting straight upright and not being able to look at a screen. And uh, so I can honestly say it's great to see you all. And I mean that in the most profound way possible. It's great to be able uh, to see you all. And thank you so much for all of your prayers on, on my behalf and all your expressions of concern. Uh, they truly have made a huge difference for Maria and me. And I'm seeing a little better every week. Don't come up to me on this side because you don't exist. I ran over a nice little lady I did not know at Costco the other day because she came right up here in the, in the blind spot and I got her, man, I got her. But, uh, so uh, just be cautious on this side. 
And uh, I ask that you would continue to pray for Maria and I as, as I now take on the role of interim lead pastor. And I'm grateful for all of our staff. I'm grateful for all of you. And I'm grateful for what God is calling us into. And I want to remind you that uh, the people in your life see Jesus best when they see him through you uh, rather than through a staff member or through something that is happening here at the church. The people in this world, the people in your world need to see Jesus through you and they need to see you in action in their lives. And uh, I commend you for all that you're doing in that way. And there's much that God wants to do in and through Rock Point Church these days and I'm excited to live into that with you over the months to come. Well, with all of my downtime, not being able to read, I had the opportunity to listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of sermons and the like, and I am a huge history buff. So I listened to a lot of podcasts and books about historical events and features, and one of the things that struck me was that human history is marked by wars that have been waged. And the passage of time seems to be measured in conflicts, even more so than it's measured in years. And apart from the odd scientific advancement like going to the moon or an extreme natural disaster like the San Francisco earthquake, the mile markers of history, when you look back through the books or you listen to the podcast, the mile markers of history are predominantly wars and conflicts. Even the space race that led to man walking on the moon came out of a desire to beat the Soviet Union to the moon. Conflict. Even the Protestant church, of which we are a part, started as the result of conflict. Now mankind, by our nature, is a fighting species. Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter 4, to the conflicts that are ongoing today and the threat of potential wars, it's all evidence of the fact that, well, we have a combative streak that's just a mile wide. And I have a hunch that you know this is true by experience. Think back on your own life. Perhaps you have mile markers of conflict. Maybe if you look back and put names on it like it was a historical textbook, you would have the great family budget debate of 1989, I think. Or maybe the great Christmas schism of 2007. And if you want to see the combative nature of humanity on display in all of its fullness, go to a campground and watch a man and a woman try to back a travel trailer <laughs> into a campsite that's too small. Absolutely, the nature of humanity comes out in its fullest there. I have conflict in my background. I have the empty coffee pot event of 2009, and to my coworker at that time, if you're watching, you know you were wrong. And I actually, <laughs> I actually said to this person, holding an empty coffee pot in my hand, Everybody knows if you kill the Joe, you make some mo, right? <laughs> so, oh my goodness. And speaking of conflict in the workplace, what kind of evil has to exist in a person's heart for them to warm up fish in the staff microwave? <laughs> oh my goodness. That is some righteous conflict right there. And there is, as we're talking about conflict, there is good and noble conflict. It's the kind of conflict in which we stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves and we seek justice for those who have no voice of their own. And that's the kind of conflict God calls us to. It's the kind of conflict we enter into when we fight hunger by participating in the Greenwood Village Food Bank or when we participate in the Morley Food Bank. It's the kind of conflict we enter into when we enrich the lives of others through our sponsorship of an Afghani refugee family or when we support our local Yazidi neighbors. And it's the kind of conflict we enter into when we combat pain and loneliness by undertaking grief share and divorce care. But that's not the kind of conflict we're going to talk about today. I could talk about that kind of conflict forever because it's what God is calling us to. But we're going to talk about the kind of conflict that God is not calling us to. 
And we've all had quarrels and fights, and it seems to be a part of our nature, and it leads to no good thing. So what is the cause of quarrels and fights among us? Well, James, being extremely practical, he takes this issue on directly. So let's read James chapter 4, verses 1 to 10 together. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong and you only want what will give you pleasure. You adulterers. Whoa, easy, James. You adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think that the Scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and in the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Be humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. The word of the Lord. What is causing quarrels and fights among you? In this passage, we see a pretty simple framework, and simple works well for me. We see the problem in verse 1. We see the cause in verses 1 through 4, and we see the solution, thankfully, in verses 7 to 10. First, the problem, quarrels and fights. What is causing them? Now, we've already established the problem in my probably too lengthy preamble. We've established the problem as our tendency to quarrel and fight, so there's little more to add, but there's a, a couple of things I do want to point out. I want to point out that James is writing to believers, to those who were to be at peace with one another. And are we really surprised, knowing ourselves, that believers can be given to fights and quarrels? This passage really is really just part of James' broader theme of living out the faith that we claim to have in tangible ways. And the reality that we have our faith, that we have our Savior, makes conflict an even bigger issue for us. It's to be expected that people who don't know the Prince of Peace, Jesus, they they would engage in conflict, but people who have crowned the Prince of Peace, who sing of him on Christmas time, those of us who have crowned him the Prince of Peace as King of our lives, we are to be held to a, a higher standard. And our lives are to be different. And for the most part, conflict is to play a much smaller and more appropriate place in our lives. And the issue is the nature in which we engage the conflict and for what reason we engage in conflict. And another thing to note here are the words that he uses, quarrels and fights. Quarrel is the general word for warfare. It's the idea of an ongoing way of life in which conflict is the theme. And fights is a more precise word. It refers to specific skirmishes and battles, those things that our mind goes back to when I say, think of a fight you had. Boom, that's the fight. It's like the the beach landing on D-Day was a part of a much larger, larger war. So what is the cause of all of this? The cause of evil desires at war within you. Verses 1 and 2, let's read them again. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and you wage war to take it away from them. Evil desires at war within you and within me. 
verse 1, that word desire is actually a neutral word. I don't want you to come away from this thinking that desire is bad. It's not. The word is neutral. It's neither good nor bad. It can be, you can have a desire for good things, a, a basic inner desire for something. The issue arises when you're not able to have it. The issue is that we fight to get our own way and what we want. Last Sunday, such a beautiful hot day, uh, Maria and I had our kids over, and of course, the reason you have your kids over is so that your grandkids will come over, right? So we have four grandkids. Uh, I won't brag too much about them. The youngest two, Benny and Sadie, are three. Just the best thing going. So we had the wading pool out. It's full of water. We had toys to play in the water. We had a bucket, and the kids were having fun filling the bucket and chasing each other around. The issue is we had two three-year-olds and one bucket. And you can imagine, I can tell by the chuckles, you know what happened there. We all start life self-centered. It's a part of the fall. We, when our desires are thwarted, there's something within us that rises up. And the outcome of this is that we scheme and we kill to get what we want. And I know you're thinking, well, I don't kill. I've never killed. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 21 and 22, You've heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, even if you're angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. It's a serious thing. And ever since Adam and Eve took matters into their own hands and reached out to take the forbidden fruit, we have fallen for the lie. We have fallen for the lie that it is up to us to get what we want and what we need. And James addresses the spiritual sickness that takes root in us when this happens in verse 2 and 3 when he said, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. James puts his finger right on the spiritual issue. In our pride, we strive to get what we want. We don't want to be reliant on God. And I believe we often don't ask God because we know that he might decline our, our request because he knows what's going on in our heart and our motives are wrong. And so we just go about trying to get it ourselves in our own way. I want it now. I want it in my way. And my ultimate goal and my ultimate motivation is my pleasure. So I'm willing to connive. I'm willing to lie. I'm willing to manipulate. I'm willing to fight to push my agenda forward outside of God's plan. And the root of this is pride. And James doubles down in verses 4, 5, and 6. He says, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the Scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate about the spirit He has placed within us, and it should be faithful to Him. And he gives grace generously. And the scriptures say God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. James makes it clear that this whole way of doing things goes directly against God's way. And in verse 4, when he uses the word world, it's referring to the cosmos mindset. Just the way everyone thinks. That independent way of doing things that relies on our own ability to get what we desire. That prideful way of thinking that says it's all up to me to get what I want. And I will fight to get it. I am my own provider. I am my own source. I am the only one I can trust. I am sufficient. And things happen to us through life that reinforce this lie. No, let me put that differently. Things happen in life that gives the enemy the chance to come and whisper in our ear and reinforce that lie. But God invites us to be dependent on Him and interdependent on one another, which is one of the reasons why it's so beautiful and so important to be a part of the body of Christ, part of the family. There's one other thing, there's one other way that this cosmos way of thinking displays itself. And it's a way of thinking that says God is ultimately my servant. And it's up to him to provide what I want. 
And if he doesn't give me what I desire when I ask, then I will fight with him. And how many times have I been put out at God when he doesn't deliver what I want when I want it? (laughs) I have some experience with that in the last few months, some conversations I've had with God, and the root of that is pride. So the solution is in verses 7 and 10. And note that humility, book ends, has the parenthesis in this that we're about to read, verse 7 and 10. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinner. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. There is to be sadness and tears before there is to be great joy as God himself lifts us up in honor. You know, a lot of our conflict is centered around the fact that we want to be honored. We want people to treat us the way we think we should be treated. We want to receive what we want to receive in the way that we want it. We want that honor. Well, the solution is in four parts. One is humble yourself before God. And with the help of the Spirit, if you look back in verse 5, you see that whole theme coming about. We're to surrender our will to God. You may be familiar, maybe you've read this same passage in another version and you hear the word submit. You were expecting to hear the word submit to God. And here the today in, in our version we're reading humble. It's, it's the same word. Give God your singular allegiance. Now if quarreling and fighting is the expression of having an adulterous heart that's in love with the world's way of thinking, then Peace is the expression of a heart that is humbly surrendered to God. So what does this look like? Well, for some of us, it will mean that we accept the circumstances we're in and allow God to give grace sufficient for each day. He he mentioned that in the previous clump of verses that we read. I'm thinking of Paul. When Paul had whatever affliction he had. And he says, I asked God numerous times, I asked God three times to remove this from me. And he told me his grace is sufficient. And we don't see Paul spiraling down in conflict with God. We see an acceptance of the fact that this is what God had for him and an acceptance of the fact that God would give him the grace he needed to endure that situation. What does this look like? Again, ask God what he has for you in this situation, the situation that you find yourself in that feels like conflict. And rather than fight, be an agent of grace and change in the life of the other person. That's a totally different way of viewing it. If you find yourself in conflict, Understand that God and you are co-workers there to be agents of grace and change in the other person's life. Doesn't that change the way you approach that relationship? Doesn't that change the way that we approach that circumstance? And in order to be an agent of change in someone's life, we must often lay down our rights because a lot of conflict comes when we feel like we're deprived of our rights. The next stitch, the next uh, step in the solution is to resist the devil and he will flee from you. There is a way that the devil would have you respond when your desires collide with the desires of another person. And that would be to fight, to insist on your rights, to work on your own agenda. And it's the whole two, three-year-olds in one bucket thing played out in adult life in the real world. What does it look like to resist the devil? You know, the other day, um, I, I, I was dealing with something and I felt myself getting agitated and it felt like, uh, it felt like conflict. So I said, Lord, I just, I need to break, I need to hear from you. Just give me something 
in this moment. So I, I took my phone out. I have things that I watch and listen to, and I fired up my phone, and you know what came on? Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> So those of you who live in the world of uh, preschoolers and beyond, you know how annoying that is. That thing got in my head. I couldn't be angry. Oh, it was my good. But listen, the, in, in reality and in seriousness, when you feel that conflict rising, go for a walk. Quote a verse of Scripture. Leave it for the next day. Take a break. Resist the desire to push your agenda forward. Control your anger. Lay down your lights and pray, pray, pray pray and invite God into the situation and in fact let me word that a little better because he's already in the situation invite God to show you where he is in that situation and when you begin to bring God into that situation the enemy will automatically flee from you the next step of the solution is to come close to God and he will come close to you Come close to God, not to get something, but to be in a relationship with Him. You'll be surprised at how much less inclined you are to fight when you know God's loving heart toward you. When you know His love, His kind disposition toward you, you can relax when you begin to know and understand that God is there with you and the battle is not yours. And when you draw close to God, you begin to see that person as God sees them. And you have His perspective on that person and you understand that that is a person in need of grace and in need of mercy, just as you do. The next step in the solution is to turn away from your sin. James expends a lot of words on this, and the first step to conquering a problem is acknowledging that the problem exists. It exists, and part of humbling yourself before God is acknowledging that you have not been perfect in this area of quarrels and fights. And admit to him that you have had ungodly conflict. And admit that you have fought to get your way outside of his will and provision. And admit that the monsters of pride and desire lurk within you. And it takes humility to say, I'm sorry, to God and to man. And I like how, how James here says, let there be tears for what you have done. I've shed tears over conflict for what other people have done. I have rarely shed tears for what I have done. And that's the direction that my eyes should be looking. It takes strength. It takes humility to own what is ours. Is there a conflict that you need to ask God's forgiveness for? Is there a conflict you need to ask someone else's forgiveness for? Humility is the path to peace. Humble yourselves before God. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up in honor. We can only stop fighting when we surrender to the Prince of Peace and receive the greater grace of God. And the call to live with humility is extended to all of us and it's possible through the work of Jesus Christ in our lives to take up the way of Jesus, to serve others and not ourselves, to work for the benefit of others and surrender our own self-interest. This is the way forward. This is the way of the kingdom. This is what Jesus called his disciples to and what he meant when he expressed them and said, if you want to be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. If you humble yourselves before God, he will lift you up in great honor. Let's pray together. Lord, the idea of conflict is hard for us. It's hard for us to accept the fact that winning is not the objective. But teach us, I pray, and guide us. Help us to be humble and tender and gentle of heart. And dear God, use us as your instruments of peace in a world that's filled with conflict. May we be bold where you have called us to enter into conflict. May we be gentle in the areas that you are calling us out of conflict. And teach us to be wise so that we can discern the difference between the two. We pray this in your name, Jesus.
Amen. Well, we just want to, as we um, move towards the end of our service, just take a moment and just respond to uh, God's word and uh, what the Spirit might be speaking to us. And so, you know, again, um, I think I shared last week that um, I'm a firm believer in what we do physically uh, as a representation of what's happening um, in our hearts and in our spirits. And um, probably one of my favorite things to do is uh, just to kneel before the Lord um, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift, and it's a sad thing that we don't do it often. You know, even even Muslims, for goodness sake, they kneel how many times a day? Um, and we have such a an amazing God who's so worthy. And so in the spirit of humbling um, ourselves before the Lord, uh, I just want to invite you to just to respond in any way that the Holy Spirit leads you, you know, um, whatever that happens to look like. Um, but we just want to just want to draw near to God as we close out our service. together.
Jesus, James is hard hitting, and it's true, we are prideful. We're greedy to have honor instead of Jesus Christ. We're, we're greedy to want everything for ourselves. Sometimes forgetting that it is you who holds everything. The whole earth is yours and everything in it, including us. So we ask for your forgiveness for self-centeredness. We ask for forgiveness for an addiction to pleasure. We ask for forgiveness for the ways we maximize the hurt another does to us and we minimize the hurt we cause another. We need you. We absolutely need you. So teach us to live humbly before you laying down our rights, resisting the devil's traps for us. And we ask, God, that you help us to rest even more deeply in your love, that we would have confidence to bring every situation to you, acknowledging we are not perfect, but Jesus Christ, you are. And teach us to weep for what we have done. We need you, Jesus Christ, our Savior. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, uh, this brings us to the close of our service on a few announcements. Uh, maybe you're continuing some good work, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, or you have a nudge about something. I encourage you, talk to one another, share. This is the community of God. This is what we do. Maybe you'd like prayer. We have prayer ministers who will be at the cross. You can certainly seek prayer or counsel there, and I'll be around as well. Uh, I do want to give an announcement. We're having uh, church-wide baptisms in the Bow River. Baptism is uh, uh, all, all through Scripture. It says, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. It happens together. And so for you, maybe today or maybe for a while, you've been thinking about being baptized. It's a public declaration of something that you've made and something happening inside your heart. And maybe you've been waiting for the bow to warm up. <laughs> because we could also do it in fall. Ron's done it in October. Uh, so we're going to do that as, a, as an entire Rock Point Church. So if you've been down to Bonas Park, there's a little walkway that connects Baker Park and Bonas Park down at the West End in the Bonas side uh, by the Stony Trail underpass there. There's a little cove. You'll find some Rock Point people there. We're going to do that uh, August 28th. That's a couple Sundays from now, 3 p.m. And we're going to see our West Hills brothers and sisters there, Bears Paw people. So if you're interested in getting baptized, please come and talk to me or your site pastor if you're, if you're online. Or you can send an uh, email to office at rockpoint.ca. And this is not a volunteering somebody else. This is uh, yourself, okay? So just in case, yeah. Uh, I also uh, did want to let you know that we do have giving and offering as part of, if you're part of this community, it's good for whatever Christian community you're part of to commit to that, to offering. So on the way out of the auditorium here, there's a black box on the back there. Uh, you can give online at rockpoint.ca under giving, or our Church Center app is really good. You can find that on Android as well as on Apple, and you can look up Rock Point Church and set up your account there. 
Um, so let me encourage you, uh, before I give you, I like to read a verse. I always like to read verses of blessing. One of the big ideas in the Old Testament that uh, Jesus fulfills is we were blessed by God in order to be a blessing to the world. Blessed by God in order to be a blessing to the world. So I'm going to read this verse for you. And then I'd like you to practice that both here. Maybe there's some missionaries you want to bless or you want to bless one another or you want to bless one another with what God has been speaking to you. You could bless somebody. And then go and be a blessing to the world. So would you stand? 1 Corinthians 15 says this, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Lord bless you. Take care. We'll see you next week. God.